Welcome, friends, to God Encounters. We're so glad you're joining us today. Today, I have a very special guest. A lot of you know Sean Edland, who we've done shows with before, and this is her very special sister, Perry, who you will love as well. Perry was born and raised in the Seattle area. She and her husband, Charles, have ministered to hundreds of people in their 30-year marriage. Perry has a passion for teaching people to hear God's voice and live their lives on purpose. Hallelujah. Her leadership role began with a Bible study for women called Women of the Word. Love it. From there, she was nominated with her husband to lead and activate seasoned ministry leaders in their God-given gifts and callings at New Life Church. God called Perry and her husband to a deeper level of study in Hebraic roots, and it's tied to Israel, which they have visited and led teams nine times. Hallelujah. Additionally, Perry and Charles were trained and equipped to minister prophetically through a school of the Spirit at One New Man Ministry. Healing of the wounds to the soul was the next step in the Lord's journey with Perry and Charles which brought them to the space to be equipped and trained to be coordinators for Family Foundations International. In addition to these, Perry actively participates in humanitarian causes to set people free from slavery to systems, such as human sex trafficking and malnourished children globally through a social business. And Perry is working on a cookbook with her talented daughter, she loves designing jewelry, gardening, reading, and swimming. Perry and Charles are also conference directors for the Northwest Christian Writers Association. Perry's next chapter in life is life coaching, health and wellness, family coaching, and relationships, spiritual matters. Amen. Teaching you Amen. to help you walk out your goals and dreams. And she got to practice on me a little, and it was really fun. So, <laughs> so I encourage you to check her out. So welcome, Perry. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I am uh, very humbled and excited and got some butterflies going on at the same Aww. time. So yeah. Everybody's yeah, going to love you. Everybody's going to love you, girl. Yeah. You're great. So um, tell us a little bit about your background for those that don't know you. Okay. Well, of course, uh, Perry Harris. Uh, I was one of the last babies, actually, a little fun fact, to be born at Northwest Hospital before they remodel it. So I literally uh, broke the wing. And <laughs> then we moved over to uh, Bremerton with my father who is Greek and my mom's Irish and German. And we have this huge, big, giant family. And then the world came crashing down when um, my father decided to do some extracurricular activities and wasn't there for this young, beautiful lady to grow up and to be blessed and to know what it's like to have a father. So my mom left and moved over to the Seattle area where uh, we finished up school here. And here I am not having the father's blessing, you know, and wound after wound after wound um, of my own doing of not having the father blessing. And I got mixed up with the wrong crowd, which led me on the streets when I was a 14 and got caught up in trafficking. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I, uh, until I was 19, was in one relationship after the other, one trauma after the other. And at age, age of 19, one of the kids that I actually partied with went to this old school Pentecostal church. And I didn't know nothing from nothing. I mean, I was straight up heathen party girl. And I walked into this place. I, I think it was myself, my sister, and one other girlfriend, which Sean, of course, was there. And uh, it was the very first time that I was like, wow, Jesus is more than a little picture on a felt board. Huh? <laughs> wow, this is real. And I felt like I was the only one in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's the day when I was 19, almost 20 years old, uh, when I, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Wow. And, but even though I received him, I still carried a lot of shame, a lot of wounds, and a lot of trauma. 
because I had never received healing um, from growing up to that age till I was 19. This is so good that you bring this up. So, you know, a lot of people super early get delivered of stuff, get, you know, but for not everybody, that's not the same walk. Okay. So I love that you're saying you accepted Jesus, you, you, you're getting to know him, but we still have some residual stuff in us sometimes that likes to hang out in the soul and trauma, <laughs> things like that. Now, you've had yeah. some training in some of this, too. Do you want to shed any light on some of that? Yes, absolutely. So uh, my husband and I are part of an amazing ministry called One New Man Ministry. And in that, they partnered with Family Foundations International through Craig and Jen Hill, which is a global ministry, partnered with them. And you basically, we go into small groups and we have video where Craig would do live. And it's basically dealing with the soul wound. So all of us from the time we were a child have been through some type of traumatic experience. And Mm -hmm. even those that may have not had what they call trauma, you've believed a lie. So in Ephesians, where it says we're to be aware of this schemes, there's one enemy, correct? Mm -hmm. But he has schemes. And those schemes visit us each and every day through triggers that trigger the lies that we believe. So as what we do is we come together and we're like, Father, where's the lie? Stir up the darkness so that we're able to find the lie and Mm. come out of an agreement with that lie. And then we ask the spirit to bring the truth. And when the spirit brings the truth and it's like he takes our heart out in 3D and shows us the trauma You are nothing. You are no good. You're a liar. You're a fraud. You're a fake. Your daddy don't love you. Your mommy don't love you. You're trash. All these lies we believe. And then we're like, we need your truth to come in. And you hear his voice speak to you. And he comes in and he tells you what the truth is. You're my queen. You're my beauty. I'm always with you. I will never leave you, never forsake you. And those are one of many God encounters that I've had with myself hearing him speak truth to me. And I asked him one time, I'm like, Father, how come some people, you know, when they first know about you, they're healed? And he goes, well, not so with you, Perry. He goes, you're a teacher. And I'm going to teach you the process of healing so that you can teach others. Wow. Oh, I love it. Well, and we know that Holy Spirit is truth, right? Yes. Holy Spirit is truth. So the Holy Spirit's going to reveal truth to break the power of those lies in your life. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. Wow. All right. So uh, do you have another God encounter you can share with us? Well, um, one of the things uh, I think I saw that uh, you've shared is um, when we meet with small groups, we kind of ask, how did God become real to you? Because um, there's so many different backgrounds. People come from all over um, different religions, different upbringings, different beliefs. And so it's good to ask without religion. How did you know God? How did he become real to you? And with it for me is dreams, absolute Mm. dreams. Um, Jesus visits me in my dreams and that's how he talks and communicates with me. Um, For an instant, before I ever went to Israel, he appeared in a tallit and I didn't even know what a tallit was. And he was holding a light, which was a candle. And he's like, look up. And I looked up and there he was holding a candle. And I was curious. Hmm. And he just looked at me with these eyes. And I saw thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon monarch butterflies flying oh everywhere. And I knew that those represented that I would be a part of thousands of transformations. And I also knew that he was showing me himself before I ever went to Israel. I learned that he was wearing a prayer shawl to lead. I learned that he was the light of the world. So in dream after dream after dream, he comes and he um, communicates with me. And I've had numerous, numerous encounters um, learning about the Hebraic roots. I'm uh, 
I love, I'm being a follower of Jesus. I'm also a follower of the feast. And so here it is Passover, which is my favorite feast. And I'm studying about when the two men met him on the road and they're like, well, didn't you hear Jesus was crucified? You know? <laughs> and he's just listening to their conversation and they all hang out. They go to have dinner and Jesus pops out the hala, you know, which was the bread and he broke it. I was fascinated with the story. I thought about it every day leading up to Passover. I'm sitting in my living room and all of a sudden he walks through my front door and the, the atmosphere changes. And I had just was having communion with just me, myself and I, you know, and I just broke the bread. And when I broke the bread, I felt a presence walk right into my living room. And I had been taught that when you feel that, that's one of those moments where there's impregnation, where there's a seed about to be deposited within your spirit. And I, all I knew to do was hold still. That's all I did, Cheryl. I held still. I'm like, Lord, wow. I was overwhelmed with the tangible presence. Mm. And I just stood there and I was like, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And I felt to write. And I just started writing things that he was telling me about Wow. and just encounter after encounter. But the dreams are probably the most profound because 5% of what we dream comes to pass, you know, but prophetic dreams as man sleeps in the night, those are the ones that you want to pay attention to because that's a love language that's between me and the father that he speaks to me about. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Well, you know, mm-hmm. I, uh, I went on a trip and got, I mean, dreams are my second language, you know, really. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's just a picture. I, I call them dream pics because they're not a full dream. They're a picture, but you know how mm-hmm. worth a thousand words, right? Yeah. So sometimes I'll just get a picture, but you know, I, I'm always very good at writing them down because they mean something. They're showing you something, something that's coming, something to be aware of, something to pray into, whatever. I mean, I get warning stuff and things too, but anyway, I remember on this one trip, this person had a problem with me hearing from God in dreams. They just, and I'm like, there's so many in the Bible. Come on. If you, how can you not be a believer and not understand that God talks in dreams? Well, and it's so funny how God works with us. So it's not until I get home from this trip. This was an international trip. It was very hard on me. Uh-huh. And um, I get home, I open up the word and I'm like, what? <laughs> I think it's in Kings where it says, and God came to Solomon in a dream, right? And mm-hmm. end of those scriptures, it says, and indeed it was a dream. But God asked him, ask me what you want. Yeah. He asked yeah. him, who doesn't want that kind of dream? Lord, come visit me and ask me what I want, right? Yeah. You know, but then it, it's like it confirmed again down further. It's like, and indeed it was a dream. Okay, you're telling us twice here. He appeared to him in a dream, but it came to pass, right? Wow. It sounds like dreams. you have such a big heart for dreams, Cheryl. I love oh, I do. to hear that. I do. And I've had a conversation one time. This was funny with Jesus. Okay. And our mouths aren't moving because you know how it says you speak spirit to spirit. Yes. Yes. I was wanting to go. This is funny. It was another international thing. I wanted to go to China, but it wasn't his timing. Okay. And I was going to go with this friend. And anyway, I'm having this conversation. Jesus is like just a few feet in front of my face. Right. We're having a conversation. I knew he was saying, he knew what I was saying, but neither one of our lips moved. Yes, yes, yes. He was telling me, it's not time to go. You need to work on your marriage. And I'm like, what? I don't... <laughs> you know how we have those conversations with God sometimes. But anyway, so it's timing. But, you know, again, it was Jesus. Our lips didn't move. Yes. So we're talking in a dream. Right? It was in the night. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm yeah. so excited. Another dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's fun. It's uh yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So beautiful. beautiful. What else do you have? I know you're full of lots of good stuff. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm full of lots of good stuff. You know, um, <laughs> I was thinking about something and of course dreams. So I know I'm just going to speak to the audience right now because 
dreams, a lot of people are like, oh, I want to dream. I want to dream. Do you want to dream? Ask the Lord. Lord, help me to remember my dreams. Everyone scientifically dreams one hour every single night. So oh, it's wow. a matter of how to tap into that. So Good. write your dream down. And one of the things I do, if you don't have a piece of paper and pencil, it's okay. Get your phone. Have it ready on memo. The second you wake up, you have to write it down because dreams are like disappearing ink. You have to get it down right away. Yes. And once you get it down, write it down. You're like, father, what does this mean? Yeah. And we all have a dream language. Okay. Yeah. Let's say I have an orange in my dream and Cheryl has an orange in her dream. Cheryl, if you had an orange in your dream, what would it mean? I don't know about an orange. <laughs> I what would it mean if you did? Uh, well, it could be a fruit of the spirit, you know, uh, I don't know. I'd have to have more about the dream, but now babies, babies uh -huh. really ministry. I've had, I've had dreams where I'm pregnant, right? I'm, oh. oh yeah, many times. And then I've even had the congratulation balloons after I've given birth, <laughs> but it was oh. usually a song, a music video, uh, something to do with ministry, sometimes business. Um, but yeah. 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 But absolutely. So now if I was pregnant in a dream, I'm like, okay, what are you birthing in, in me? That's and back to the orange and orange would mean the color orange to me. If it was an orange to somebody, it could mean citrus to somebody. It can mean Florida to somebody. It can mean orange juice. That's their favorite drink. So okay. in your journal, start to write down the main things that are in your dream. So when you have them, you already have your language written down. Good. And so if you go to look at it, I'm swimming in my dreams a lot, breathing underwater a lot. Wow. That's movement in the spirit, you know, yes. but to somebody else, it may be, oh, I'm overcoming swimming, or maybe <laughs> I can do more things than I think I can. So, but if you write down your dream, because it's a love language between your, you and the father, you can yeah. go back to what you have written down and be able to instantly figure it out. Because yes. you have already documented the main things. Maybe you dream of clouds or maybe you dream of mountains or water or pregnant and having lots of babies. <laughs> you know, those yeah. can mean different yeah. to each person. And yes. uh, dreams come through the multitude of busyness. And a lot of busy people have a lot of dreams. That yeah. comes from uh, King Solomon said that himself. That's and good. so it's really good if you remember that, because especially now when he's pouring out a spirit among all flesh that we are in a position now to be able to receive dreams in many different forms. And I, I love, of course, dream and dream interpretation and all that other kind of stuff, because there's a hurting, there's people hurting out there, you guys. I know some of you guys are hurting right now. There's a lot of you hurting right now with everything that's going on in our world. And dreams is just another way for your creator to be able to minister to you and be able to talk to you and bring love in your life. So that's just, that's just one way, you know? Yes. Well, and while we're on this subject, two things. So um, I always say, what, um, what was left in your spirit? What were you frightened? Were you excited? Were you um, grieved? Were you what, what was the feeling that the spirit left in you from that dream? I always go by that too. Also, um, yes, yes, key. Yes. Another thing with the phone is there's a beautiful voice recorder. I don't take the time to write it down. I will say it into the voice recorder. And then in the morning, I have a dream journal and I'll, I'll write it out in there. I have to be very diligent to do it because sometimes I get a lot of them, but, um, Tembisa is watching and she, let's see what you think about that. She said she's dreaming about someone who's already married, getting married. And she said she had that twice and isn't sure what it means. What do you think about that? Well, one of the first things that comes to me is for her to ask Lord, which one of my friends is in a bad relationship that may be making even like when you're married and you're getting ready to be married again, you might be making another bad situation. So I would pray something like this, father, who are my friends right now that you want to lay on my heart? That's getting ready to make a really bad decision in relationships. That's what I would ask. 
And whenever you ask someone in a dream, whether it's your brother, your father, your sister, your mother, the neighbor, Lord, is that who they really are in my dream? Good. If I have my sister in a dream, if I have Cheryl, is she really Cheryl? Or does she represent, you yes. know, a woman of influence? Does she represent someone that does th- what we're doing here today? Good. Does she represent a daughter of the body of Christ? Who does she represent? Good. Once you find out rep- you represent, listen, he's always talking. Yes. You know, God doesn't have human lungs. He, <laughs> he doesn't have to take a breath. He's constantly talking and ministering us all the time. And he likes when we ask. Yes. Okay. Once you figure that out and you hear, oh, it's so-and-so. Okay. Pray, start praying for their relationships. Yes. And that does sound like a warning dream. I'm not sure what the young lady's name is again, but it sounds like God gave you a warning dream. Yeah. And dreams come in different forms. They come in warnings. Talk about what Cheryl was talking about earlier about soul wounds. You could be praying to help a wound not to get inflicted upon your friend from going Mm. and doing something Mm. stupid. You could be that person that stands in the gap to be able to pray for them. You know, like how amazing is that? Right. You know, and dreams come with warnings. They keep man from doing wrong. They keep man from pride. Yes. They, the healing wounds. There are dream after dream after dream where I would wake up and go, that was a healing dream. You're about to heal me of that. You showed me a memory when I was five and I was totally humiliated. Okay, Lord, I know you're about to heal me with that. What do you want to show me in your word? Yeah. What do you want to? talk about what is it you want to share with me because I want to be healed of this. There's encouraging, there's future dreams. There's where you are right now. There's dreams about God's character and about who he is. It's just you asking the questions. If you don't hear the answer, darling, ask again, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Lord. Okay. If that's what it means. Okay. What are you saying about that? (laughs) Tell me more. Be inquisitive. Just keep asking and asking and asking like a persistent widow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, she said it may be warm, but Sean's watching and Sean said she just saw a marriage that was dead end and it was going to come to life, a.k.a. getting married again. That's cool, too. So that could be, you know, a promise to this person that, hey, God's renewing their marriage. So it'll be like a new marriage and, you know, a new marriage. That's praise God, too. So I love it. You know, um, ah, man, I can go forever on this subject. I didn't think <laughs> this is so fun. This is my life, right? You know, I was like, ah. so when you were talking about swimming, it's so funny because in the natural, I'm not a great swimmer, okay? Hmm. But I've had dreams where I remember this one. It was so funny. I was with these two leaders and we were we were walking and we came into the swimming pool area and I dove in and I'm doing backflips and I'm doing and I'm like, look at me. And this is so funny because I would never in the natural, you know, <laughs> look at me. And I'm doing all these strokes and things like and it's because, you know, when God takes you into the deep end of the pool, right? And you start moving in things of the spirit you've never done before. It's exhilarating, right? Yeah. It lifts your spirit. And that's what that was saying. God's saying, okay, I'm taking you in deeper and you're going to be okay. You're going to do this thing. You're going to be good at, you know, so it might be scary at first, but when God, yeah. it just really encourages you. And, um, so I love those kind of dreams where I'm swimming and, and it's exhilarating feeling, right? It is. It definitely is. And it's refreshing. And we need times of refreshing right now. We definitely need that, you know, and one of the things also, you know, you can even go, Lord, I'm going to take a nap. And would you give me a dream for my particular situation that I'm going through right now? Mm. I learned that from James Gall and I've done that. I'm 20 minute nap. I'll wake up and go, wow. Okay. So that's something else you can do. Very cool. Now, another thing um, I know in my own personal life, and this doesn't happen all the time, but like if you're if you're waking up, but you're not really ready to yet wake up and you kind of drift off again. I've also done this. I I don't do this every day, but sometimes when I'm reading the word and I'm tired and I start to doze off a little bit, I will go into a vision or a picture or a dream. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's sanctified. Okay. 
So you have to realize we have a sanctified imagination, right? When we when we give that imagination to the Holy Spirit and say, I want it sanctified, um, God can speak to it through that sanctified imagination. That's where this stuff comes from. That's where creativity comes from. Wow. That's another one of my happy places, but <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that's absolutely true. Think about like where we are right now, you and I sitting right here. Yes. Tomorrow's our imagination. Yesterday's yes. our memories. But we're present <laughs> right here. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely present right here. And we can use God gave. I mean, people are like, well, I don't draw or I don't cook or I don't do this or I don't do that. Or I'm not an artist like so and so. But you right. have your imagination. Your imagination is the paintbrush and you're stroking that on wow. your future. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And don't so use your imagination. Yeah. Don't limit yourself. You know, that's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if we compare ourselves, that's a deadly sin right there. And it's going to shut. <laughs> time. Okay. Do not look at this person and go, oh man, if I could paint like them, or if I could play like them, or if I could see whatever, don't do that because you're going to shut yourself down. But if you, mm -hmm. all it takes is Holy Spirit wants you to have the desire he wants to give you the gifts. You just have to desire it, right? And then exactly. you start exercising that until you start moving in that gift. Amen. I've had it. Up. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. And that's so, beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, oh, Delphina said she's dreamt many times that she's been pregnant and she had her kids already. Well, now you know why, Delphina. <laughs> God was birthing something inside of you, girlfriend. So, hey, and she loves to swim. Love it. Um, yeah. Okay, Irfan, we believe with you that your big dream is God's going to give you a church building for your village in Pakistan. We believe for that. Okay. That's a godly uh, yeah. dream, right? God's put that desire. The devil wouldn't want you to have a church. Come on. That's a godly desire. So we believe with you that you, God will bring that to fruition for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, and absolutely. One of the things that he could do, have him print out a picture of a church, you know, visualization is huge yes. and it's biblical, you know, um, with the story in Jacob and Laban, what did he do? He wanted to change the stripes to the spots and the Lord said, put a trow and he painted it white. And then all the sheep went and made it right there and they changed color and he became a man of wealth. So the Lord showed me Wow. that um a prophet came into town one time and he looked at me and he says and god sees the pictures that you put on the wall he sees wow. the pictures you put on the wall so if i see something i cut it out and that's what i did with israel i found a 10 cents postcard and i got it it was of the 1970 mount of olives and i put it on my refrigerator and i wrote what date I will go to it. And I put it up there and I looked at that every single day. I have books of pictures of things that have come to pass in my life because that became my focus because what, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yes. And as we meditate on it, then yes. God gives us creativity. He gives us ideas. He gives us strategies to be able to bring our heart's desires. Why? Because our heart's desires are his desires. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And so if he gives us the desire yes. in Isaiah, the last chapter of Isaiah, he's like, am I going to have a woman be pregnant, but not bring it to term? Mm. He's like, of course, I'm going to bring the child to term. So if God gives us a dream and we have the faith to believe it, then he's going to be able to give us the steps. What does it say in Proverbs 623? It says, if we're to commit our ways into the Lord and he establishes our path, that word in there established, that's our thoughts and our patterns that we think that's mm. changing uh, um, our brainstem, our cells to be able to go from the old dead trees, Carolina Leaf, doctor, <laughs> she's amazing, study her stuff up and be able to go from a 21 to a 90 day transformation of mm. thinking, well, I want to think this way. Well, you hold a thought that long, you will, because your identity is what brings about your beliefs. Your beliefs changes your behavior and your behavior is what gives you the results. So truly, wow. as a man thinks in his heart, he becomes 
that identity that he dwells on. And don't you think that God wants to infuse in us constantly his identity and who he says we are and who we are? It's so powerful. It's just that powerful. So good. Oh, I love it. Those are some of the yeah. nuggets I knew you had in you. <laughs> Yeah, so you're just you know, bringing them out. You're just bringing them out, Cheryl. No, I you love got great this. Great questions. Great questions. <laughs> this is great. I mean, it's things to think about. I mean, you know, if we take the time to sit down and dream, a lot of people have given up on dreaming. And you know what? God wants to blow on that today. Okay, let's just get rid of all those cobwebs that have taken over that creative space in you, that ability to dream, that imagination that's sanctified. Let's just blow those cobwebs. Yeah out right now in Jesus name yeah. say Lord give me the ability to dream again yes. thoughts your mm -hmm. what is ask the Lord what is your dream for me God yeah. in that yeah. I mean you're gonna be surprised you may you may not you know you may go wow I forgot about that I thought about that a long time ago and I forgot about it let God awaken the dreams that he has for you. I'm telling you, there's no greater joy than when you're moving in what God has called you to do. When you're using the gifts that he's given you freely. God gives us these things freely, and he just wants to bless his kids. Come on. So when you're using mm -hmm. that, you think that doesn't bring joy to him to see you yeah. moving in yeah. joy and touching others? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And it's contagious yes. you know you can meet somebody no matter where it is no matter where you go you have a I learned this um from one of our mentors and he said you can tell what a person's thinking in a five minute conversation you can also tell what their dreams are and what their passion are and when you meet people who are the most funnest people to meet people of passion people <laughs> that have a dream right. and but I had got to a place in my life and the beginning in January where I was just, um, you know, everyone's coming out of COVID and you're kind of like, wow, well, what's going on? What you yeah. got going on? And my <laughs> husband gives each of us an assignment in this, in our big, giant, big, fat, Greek fat family. And he goes, okay, I want everybody to write a letter to themselves. And you're going to say, I thank you for doing this. And it could be a page of it. And is what we're going to do is we're going to take this, put it in an envelope, and you're going to open it up at the end of 2022. And oh. I'm like, what am I, Lord, what am I going to do? I've done this, that, been on that board, that board. I have this and that. It's like, what's your dream for me? What do you have for me? I'm, wow. I'm excited and I'm willing and I'm waiting. And I'm like, what do you have? And I would go to the coffee shop and, and just muse over it all day. And I go, nothing's coming to me. What, what do you have for me in this next chapter? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, the Lord reminded me of a friend of mine who was a life coach. And I and how she inspires. And she was one of mine. And I go, oh, my gosh, I'm transformed because of her. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that's it. I've been doing this. For years and years and years, I just never had a title. I didn't even know what to call it. And I go, that's what it's called. Okay. So yeah. I started looking up all these schools and uh, found one of the top five uh, health and wellness life coaching schools um, globally and became a, a part of that in January. But he had to go in and, and honor my asking, Lord, what do you have for me next? What are you doing in me next? What dreams need to be dusted off the shelf Good. and polished and shine? Yeah. And because that's what we're called to do, yes. you know, this little light of mine, you know, <laughs> we're, we're called to shine. Like you yes. showed me the candle and he was keeping it lit because he was calling me to shine. And if we're not walking in the purpose that God has given us Come on. that mandate from heaven, then we don't have that passion. And I mean, the world's attracted to passion, y'all. It is what it is. Yeah. You know, it is, it is what it is. It's like yes. opening the coats and the salesmen are so excited because of everything. We <laughs> open up the pantry of our heart and we're loaded full of stuff. <laughs> we're the ones that are supposed to be the most passionate, you know? <laughs> and so like that's that. kind of what, what led me up to my latest um, passion and purpose yeah. and it's contagious 
like yes. you, Cheryl, you are contagious when you're around people because <laughs> oh, you're right. walking in part of your dream. You're walking in your purpose. You're walking yes. in your goals and your heart's desires. And you're constantly yes. in fellowship with the father. So yes. he's downloading, like uh, Sean says, hot off heaven's press, you know, <laughs> he's like constantly downloading yes. to you. Yes. Beautiful. You know, I'm a very goal oriented person. And I've said before, you know, if I don't have a goal, you might, I might as well. <laughs> I mean, seriously, because, you know, and that, you, I, I think that's healthy, right? Yeah. It's healthy. And, and even for your brain, they will tell you education system. If you're not constantly learning something new, your brain cells are dying, folks. And we're not getting any younger. Okay. Well, I am. Yeah. I'm getting younger. Uh, you know, <laughs> I claim that scripture. My youth is being renewed like the eagle, right? Okay, so I'm getting younger with the with the passion of the Lord. But um, you know, you've got to be learned in them and, and be teachable. We don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Be teachable, right? Be willing to learn. And you're gonna be put mm -hmm. inside of your comfort zone. There's gonna be times where it's not fun, but you know what? It's for your better. And everybody else around you is going to benefit as well as yourself, right? Absolutely, Cheryl. Absolutely. Well spoken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The one who has the golden nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, well, no, we can bounce off each other. This is fine. So it's like. Well, we mine from the same gold mine. You know that, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> right. Well, we have the same father, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's like okay make a goal for yourself dream and and you know but i love what you said about putting it on paper i need to be more disciplined about that and you know sometimes it's just you gotta quiet yourself find that time but i tell you if you discipline yourself and i'm, I'm talking to myself right now because i need to do this because i have a very big dream that um i just had a meeting with somebody last friday and they go i want to see this on paper and i'm like Okay, <laughs> put, put okay. vision on paper, write it on tablets, it, you know, Habakkuk. Yeah. So I'm going to put it on paper. I'm going to draw out exactly what my dream is. The, the, and the Lord knows what it is, but I'm going to put it on paper, okay, so I can pray into that. There is something about seeing something visual before your eyes every day. And Perry, you taught me this when you did the practice on me for the life coaching. You gave me yes things or things to pray into every single day okay yes. that dream come forward so i wrote them out and she said put them somewhere where you can see them every day i have it on my mirror in my bedroom yeah. and every day okay i have to read those and pray those out to the lord so it's yeah. a reminder of what you want to see the lord fulfill in your life right yeah the beautiful thing is, is when you can mark them off and go, I'm moving in this right now. This is so awesome. Yeah. God answered this prayer. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you're given a uh, part of that Habakkuk 2, 3. It talks about not just writing the vision down, but part B says, so that a herald will run with it. Ooh. You know, and if we don't give the messenger a, a message, he has nothing to receive to run with and bring to fulfillment. Wow. That's so mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Never thought about that before. Yeah. That's why it's important, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm learning as we go. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is good stuff. Okay. We've yeah. got dreams. What else? Um, you have a desire. You, you like to equip people. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely. What are some other ways that you like to equip people? Hearing God's voice. That's the biggest. That is absolutely the biggest because, you know, so the reason why the ancient path seminars uh, through Family Foundations curriculum is so powerful is because when we break into small groups, we're like the midwives. You know, we're not doing the labor. We're not doing anything. We're just doing coaching and so that their ears can be heard. So what does the Bible say? He who has ears to hear, it's a gift from God. Okay. So now here we are in this place. And when we just settle ourselves down and we just ask the questions and there's a book out there, believe it or not, 17 ways that God speaks. Okay. I mean, in Romans two, it says that 
man is without excuse because all they have to do is look at creation and know that there's a God. I just look outside. I live across the street from a park and I see the beauty of that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he can talk to us through a little child. Our yes. oldest son was going through a lot of turmoil, you know, when he was a teenager and this man was inebriated and he came up to my husband and gave him a message. And my husband said, Lord, is that you? And he, this, this man, he was like stoned out of his mind, told my husband about our son, you know, <clears throat> who we didn't know where he was at the time, you know, and he get, that gave us hope and encouragement. And my husband was transformed through that encounter. So wow. in the places where our soul is disturbed, we're like, Lord, is that true? That's the biggest question, especially nowadays, you know, through uh, what we call the prophets of Aha, meaning the a hundred million other voices, you know, that usually starts with three letters on some broadcasting system, you know, but we need to go, Lord, is that true? If somebody said something to us, I ask that to the Lord all the time, Lord, is that true? Mm. You know, is this true? Is that true? When you ask mm -hmm. that, is that true? You're mm -hmm. enabling the Holy Spirit to come and to speak truth to you. Now you hear a voice. Now that's going to come in conflict and it's going to come right up against the lie that you believe. Mm. it's going to come right in contact with that. Now you have a choice. You can either come into an alignment with that lie or come out of an alignment with that and believe the truth. You now have a decision. That's the beauty about the free will. So now that you have that decision, you're like, okay, Lord, I want to believe what you say because Charles and I or any other coordinators can share, Cheryl, you can share something with somebody. But if God speaks to somebody, they'll never forget it. Our words will fall away, oh. but God's words will never fall away. Totally. And when you hear something from God, it's here. Nobody can take that from you. Somebody can come up and go, oh, your name's Barry. No, my name is Cheryl. Oh, your name's Carrie. No, my name is Cheryl. <laughs> Nobody can take Cheryl away from you. <laughs> Why? Because that's a God-given name that was given to you. Right. The same with Perry, daughter of a leader. Nobody can take that away from me. Mm. That's something that God gave me. And when some, when God speaks to us, nobody can take that truth away from us. Yes. Come nobody on. can. Come you on. Know? And so when we come out of an agreement with that lie, we come into an agreement with that. That's true. So that's my passion. It is to teach people to hear God's voice so that they can hear him for themselves. Yes. When there's no, um, they don't have the Bible with them. They don't have their phone with them. They don't have the TV. They don't have the internet. They don't have anything. And they're alone in the darkest valley in the darkest place of their life. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to know how to press in and to hear him for themselves. The yes. one who created them, the one who knows the hairs on their head, the one Come that on. knows their thoughts they think of. come on you know the one who knows those that knows everything the beginning of time yes. the rising of the sun the going down everything yes. he knows us and created us yes. and so why not learn to hear his voice why not yes, yes. you don't got anything to lose but maybe a little lie <laughs> that is so good and you know you're talking about our children i know we've had similar um situations but um, the beautiful thing is, you know, when I would get so frustrated with my children because they wouldn't listen to me, you know, come on. I mean, a, a kid not wanting to listen to their parent. Who ever heard of that? <laughs> but when they didn't, I learned that God still knew their language and he's talking. They didn't tell me till later. And it's like, oh, OK. So, you know, quit worrying. Just keep saying, Lord, I give this child to you. If you're if you're in that situation right now um, and your child's not listening to you and you don't know what to do, um, it could be a grandchild, whatever. You know, God knows their language. Don't stop praying, okay? But know that God is working behind the scenes in ways that you don't even know about yet. But one day you will. And I want to encourage you in that because God cares about your children and your grandchildren and every generation to come. Amen. He is a God of covenant. And I love that, you know. So he's always talking, like Perry said. And, you know, he confirms so many different things. I mean, 
I can be driving down the road and, and a license plate in front of me confirms exactly what I needed to, to know about. You know, I mean, come on. As prophetic people, we get a little weird like that anyway. <laughs> but it's like a picture, a sign, a sentence, a song, whatever. I'm like, there it is again. It's a confirmation, <laughs> you know. You know, and not just, not are we just seeking for things for ourselves, but there's a hurting world out there. So whenever yes. I go somewhere, I'm like, Lord, what do you have for me at the store? Who do you want to highlight to me? That's Who good. needs prayer? Yes. And I can just walk down an aisle as I'm picking out my, my favorite fruit. And all of a sudden, I feel this grieving next to me. And I may not say anything. Sometimes I'm just like, Lord, help them to grieve. Help them to process it, whatever it's going yeah. on. Yeah. You know, and I can just feel certain things because I'm a feeler. So I can feel certain things when I'm around people. Yeah. And so we just don't need to hear God's voice for ourselves. We need to hear him for others That's so good. that we can um, be, you know, help, you know, motivate and inspire and bless and yes. be there for other individuals. And I know a lot of evangelists out there that are like that, you know, that oh, yeah. will see visions of people. I mean, I have letters that I've woke up in the middle of the night and wrote, and I don't know who they're for yet. Wow. And I keep, I keep one letter with me in my purse. I'm like, Lord, whenever I meet that person, I'm going to hand it to him. I went into a Starbucks one time and all of a sudden the Lord showed me this person's life sitting in the Starbucks. I got a pencil. I wrote it out and I gave it to this individual. And I said, well, I just felt God wanted me to have you this and wrote it out. And I walked out the door with my husband, you know, I just walked out the door five years later. We were having Passover. Isn't that interesting? Passover at a church. The pastor of the church came up to me and he goes, oh, my God, I knew I recognized you. This, you're the one that gave me that letter in Starbucks. And he goes, that letter was the most encouraging thing. And he brought it out of his office and showed it to me. And I went, oh, my gosh. Wow. You know, children in and out of hospitals, almost dying. He had this traumatic experience. And that that just because I was willing to go, mm -hmm. Lord, do you have something for somebody in here? Do wow. you have a word of encouragement? Do you wow. have something I can, you know, uplift somebody up with today? Does somebody need to know they're loved, valued, and wanted? You need, Lord, use me. That's so good. And, and I'll never forget that. That was because I prophesied by writing it down. And so I write, I write down, I write down everything, you know, <laughs> as that's much as good. I possibly can, you yeah, know, that's because good. you never yeah. know, because I constantly want to give the Herald something to run with. <laughs> that is so good. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I need to be more, I need because sometimes we get so focused on what we're doing when we're out and about, you know, that sure. That's good. That's a good reminder. Um, I used to pray a lot. There was a season where um, every time I was going to get gas at the gas station, I'd end up praying with somebody or you know, the grocery store, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, that's a good reminder. <laughs> to, to always be, you know, hey, open. And you never know, you know, people are going through stuff, right? You never know. Just now, now you may not get the confirmation like Perry did. Here's what I say. I don't believe until we get to heaven that we will know how many people we touched. Okay. But I believe when we get to heaven, God's going to show us all the different people and lives that we touched down here on earth that we didn't even realize. We were just doing life, doing what we're called to do. And we never heard the end of the story. But then in heaven, I believe we will one day. Yeah. It's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, great to get confirmations down here, but you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Well, um, I want you to do a salvation call. Definitely. And then how are you feel led to pray over everybody after that? Okay. Okay? Absolutely. Well, um, one of the things that came to me was, is that coming into an agreement with truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me when I was 19. I came into an agreement with truth, laying down my identity and receiving his identity of what he did and what price that the father paid for his son for me, yeah. for me. 
Yeah. That's what he did. And that's all that we're doing is we're coming into an agreement that I've made miss some mistakes that I've gone astray. That's what sin means is to miss the mark. Mm -hmm. And so when we miss the mark, we need to come back into an alignment. We yeah. need to come back into that one minute. And that's what Jesus did when he paid that price on the cross for us. And that he shed that blood, which made atonement for my sins. Yeah. And that's all I did when I was 19 years old. And then what happens then? It's like, okay, you come in into an agreement with that. You receive him into your being. You go, I believe that. And that's the truth. I've heard people just go up to the altar and go, sock it to me, Jesus. And he knew that was it. And, and they were born again. And that yeah. means we are a new creation and yes. all things are passed away. All things are made new. Then it comes the next fun part. In Psalms 119, it says we need to be the law of the Lord converts the soul. Mm -hmm. So as we get to know the Lord, as we get to know his law, as we get to know his characteristics, our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions is now being converted. It's being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And now as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And that's how we grow because we start to get into a place where we have the mind of Christ. So that I pray for each one of you guys today is that seek out the Lord for your healing. Yes. Ask questions about dreams. Ask questions instead of being in your own little bubble at 7-Eleven or Kroger, <laughs> Safeway, wherever it is that you are, who Oh, use me today. Who can I minister to? Who can I love on? Who can I bring life to? Who is hurting? You know, who, who, who lost a child? Who just lost their job? Who's behind mm. on their mortgage? How mm. can I bring forth a word of encouragement? You know, all life coaching is, is I'm taking the life of Christ and I'm helping other individuals to achieve their goals and their dreams, helping mm. them to see their blind spots so that healing and wholeness can come so that they can believe through identity identification that they can be everything that God has called them to be, that they yes. can live their lives on purpose, yes. that they can walk in the call that God has for them. Yes. And so that's what I have today, Cheryl. Woohoo. Well, um, all right. So if you've never asked Jesus into your heart and she just kind of broke it down for you, made it very simple. And, and um, just, can you just lead us in the sinner's prayer really quick? Yeah. So, okay. Father, I just thank you for these individuals, Lord. I thank you for those that have a heart to want to know you, that are in that place of brokenness beyond anything we can think or imagine. We understand, you know, what it's like to be in a place of brokenness. And, Father, I just ask that their heart would be open to you right now in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. that they would receive that price that was paid for them simply coming into an alignment with what you did for them and coming out of an alignment of who they think they are or believe they are through a series of lies and soul wounds that they would come into an agreement that your blood is enough yes your blood is enough your blood is enough to cover us yes. and it seems so like wow that a sacrifice would be big enough to do that but it is so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. And so I pray that for you in Jesus name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed that for the first time, please reach out and let me know, you know, all of heaven is throwing a party in honor of you. It says the angels rejoice when one soul comes to Christ. So and we covered so many things today. I encourage you to come back and listen again. Wow, we, we talked about a lot of things. But in the meantime, keep dreaming. Keep asking God what his dream is for you. Keep moving towards those goals. And um, stay blessed, friends. We love you.